Good morning. This is John from the Springs Mennonite Church. Yeah, in case you couldn't tell from my, my shirt, it's still cold here. <laughs> February is starting out as a really wonderful month to be cold. <laughs> so I hope if you're listening to me, you're listening in warmer weather. Ours will pick up. We're actually going to get out of the 20s sometime in the next week or so. That would that would be nice. But I want to continue on my trek through Proverbs. And today I want to look at one in the 19th chapter. Now, this is a really, really interesting proverb. And it has so much wisdom in it that you and I really could benefit from, I think. So let's listen to it. Chapter 19. Verse three, people ruin their lives by their own foolishness and then are angry at the Lord. <laughs> wow. People ruin their lives by their own foolishness. I know a lot of people think that, that their lives have been ruined by somebody else. They cheated me on this and it ruined everything. Or they they told lies about me and it ruined everything. And, and it's easy to blame someone else when we mess up our lives. It's actually easier to do that than to look at our own selves. See, nobody wants to admit that they're at fault. Now, there are some people who go through life, psychologists call them narcissists, who think they never do anything wrong. Everything is always somebody else's fault. And if you've ever been around one or you know one, oh gosh, are they difficult people to try to deal with. So if you find one, just just run away. <laughs> don't, don't even waste your time trying. It's not going to help. Believe me, I've had a lot of experience in that one. But it says here that people ruin their lives by their own foolishness. Now, I've made a lot of mistakes in life. I'm sure I'm not the only one. And I don't think I finished making mistakes. I'll make more. But when I look back over it, almost every mistake, I did it. Nobody made me do it. Nobody forced me to do it. Nobody encouraged me to do it. I chose to do the wrong thing. Now, I give you this crazy example. When I was coming out of college, I had four offers to complete a PhD in biochemistry. The best offer I had was full tuition and enough money to live on uh, while I got my degree. The best offer I got was full tuition and whatever amount of money I wanted to come study there. And those four offers Man, they were good. But in the end, I turned them all down. Now, when I looked back, I finished my PhD 20 years later in a different subject. When I looked back and I thought, you know, I could have finished my education 20 years earlier if I had just gone to one of those programs. That was my choice. I didn't do that. Now, at the time, I thought I was making a good decision. I don't know whether it was or not. I really liked biochemistry. I was good at it. It was fun. It was interesting. I could have spent my life doing that. But I chose not to. And many people thought I was being foolish. You know what? From all the measures you could find in the world, I probably was. But then later on, God used that foolish decision to lead me in a totally different direction. 
And when I look back now over all of those years, I'm really glad that I changed courses. Not so much that doing that before wouldn't have been worthwhile, it would have been. But that was a decision I made. For whatever reason, I made that decision. You know, people who do drugs, they choose to take the drug. They ruin their lives. I know. I've got a lot of experience dealing with people who've made that choice. And they tell me how that they were mistreated growing up or how they did this or how this happened to them. And all of that's true, but they did it themselves. Now, it's one thing to recognize that I made the mistake, but the proverb says something else here. He says, and then after doing something foolish, then they're angry at God. <laughs> Why is it that when things go great, we say God's wonderful? And when things don't go great, we wonder whether God is wonderful. In fact, some people even say God is awful. Why is it we blame God? Well, a lot of people, I guess, think that God should prevent us from making our own choices or should stop us from doing this or keep them from doing that. But you know, God doesn't work that way. He lets you and me choose. We have chosen our life. Now, it could be that circumstances drove us in the direction we went, but we chose it. And if we made foolish mistakes, we did it. Why would we blame God? He just stood by the side, watched us make those stupid mistakes. And I think he cried and he shook his head. And I think he was sad. Now I know we can't, we can't attribute human emotions to God but it helps me understand the position that God is in. He gives you and me free choice. If our lives are miserable, we ought to look at what we're doing. We ought to talk to him about it too, because he'll do his part, but what are we doing? You know, if you're overweight, you're eating too much, or you're eating the wrong things. I know, I struggle with losing weight. I understand how difficult that can be. I also understand how easy it is to blame someone else, but I'm the one that chooses to eat whatever I eat. You see, God wants us to live a life of joy and wonder and amazement. And if that's not what you're doing, I invite you to take a good look at yourself. Don't blame somebody else. Take a good look at yourself because God wants better for you. I guarantee it. Well, thanks for listening. Hope you have a wonderful day, wonderful rest of the week. I'll be back again tomorrow and talk some more about Proverbs. God bless you. Thanks for listening. I'll talk to you again.